I am Jeremy Ward from King's College London. Together with Paul McLaughlin from University College Dublin, I was given the opportunity to put together a symposium entitled Hypoxic Pulmonary Hypertension for Load on the Right Ventricle for the International Union of Physiological Sciences Congress held in Birmingham in July 2013. Hypoxia causes vasoconstriction of the vessels of the lung. This is known as hypoxic pulmonary vasoconstriction. Normally, this acts to optimize regional ventilation for fusion matching. But if the whole lung is hypoxic, for example, as a result of ascent to altitude or in chronic hypoxic lung disease, there is pronounced elevation of the pulmonary artery pressure or hypoxic pulmonary hypertension and as a result, this increased pulmonary arterial pressure increases the load on the right ventricle. Over time, this leads to adaptive hypertrophy of the right ventricle. In most people, the increase in pulmonary arterial pressure is moderate, and physiological adaptation of the right ventricle allows a new steady state to be maintained for years. However, there is a cost in the form of impaired exercise performance due to decreased maximal cardiac output. Unfortunately, there is significant variability between individuals in their response to chronic hypoxia. Some do not reach a steady state, but there is a continued increase in pulmonary arterial pressure and maladaptive changes in the right ventricle, leading eventually to right ventricular failure. In patients with chronic lung disease, these changes contribute significantly to morbidity and mortality. The mechanisms underlying hypoxic pulmonary hypertension and the consequent altered function of the right heart therefore continue to be the focus of intensive research. And over the last decade, there have been substantial advances in our understanding. The contributors to this symposium have provided timely reviews as to the state of the art of this intriguing phenomenon. Drs. Wang and Chesler of the University of Madison, Wisconsin, in a comprehensive review of the whole area, have highlighted the moderate, adaptive and reversible nature of right ventricular and pulmonary vascular remodeling in hypoxic pulmonary hypertension. In particular, they point out the important contribution made of arterial stiffening to right ventricular load at rest and in exercise. They also discuss the fact that increased hematocrit in hypoxic pulmonary hypertension makes a larger contribution to right ventricular overload than previously thought. A major advance was made at the turn of the century with the discovery of the genetic abnormality behind a rare form of inheritable pulmonary hypertension, heterozygous loss of function mutations in the bone morphogenetic protein receptor type 2. Drs Upton and Morell discuss the interactions between this pathway and transforming growth factor beta in the chronic hypoxia and monocrotylin animal models of pulmonary hypertension. Notably, both experimental models showed reduced expression of bone morphogenetic protein receptor type 2. However, increased transforming growth factor beta signaling and decreased bone morphogenic protein signaling were only observed in the monocrotylin model. Doctors Niger and the Dobler review the factors underlying the effects of hypoxia on the pulmonary circulation, in particular the separate effects of changes in small resistance vessel distensibility and changes in blood viscosity due to erythropoiesis induced by hypoxia. In particular, they consider the consequences of these changes for right ventricular function in humans. Yvonne Dempsey and Mandy McLean from the University of Glasgow discuss the important influence of gender on pulmonary arterial hypertension. Paradoxically, although idiopathic and hereditable pulmonary arterial hypertension occurs much more frequently in females than males, female gender and oestrogens can both protect against and exacerbate pulmonary arterial hypertension in experimental models. In this review, they explore the role of oestrogen metabolism in pulmonary arterial hypertension and recent evidence that sex hormones may have direct influence on the right ventricle and its function. Recently, induction of right ventricular overload by pulmonary artery banding has been used to dissect out the effects of a pure increase in right ventricular load from those associated with hypoxic pulmonary hypertension. This has highlighted some intriguing differences. Dr. Janssen and colleagues from the Universities of Gießen and the Marburg Lung Centre discuss the development of a mouse model of pulmonary artery banding 
and its use in determining the physiological and molecular responses of the right ventricle to pressure overload. They make a particular emphasis on the myocardial regulatory effects of cyclic GMP and phosphodiesterase 5 signaling in these conditions. <laughs>